السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وكنتين إن شاء الله تعالى وصورة ياسين and we'll go through verses 45 to 47 إن شاء الله and uh, we'll start with the recitation and we get to know some of the meanings and the words and to إن شاء الله to have the intention to try to memorize them إن شاء الله repeat after me إن شاء الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما يأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أنطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أنطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين وإذا قيل له متقوا وإذا قيل له متقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم خائزهبي لعلكم ترحمون all easy وما تأتيهم two memes becomes one with two counts وما تأتيهم من آية تنوين after it mean من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين معرضين وإذا قيل لهم وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا نون سكون أفتر دفاء إخفاء أنفقوا مما ميم الشدة رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا فور فايف كاونتس أنط أنط ذا طائز سكون قال قال أنطعم مَنْ لَوْ يَشَاءُ مَنْ رَلَ وَيْتُ ذَلَامْ مَنْ لَوْ يَشَاءُ الله فور the five counts أطعمه the ta is قال قال أط أطعمه then for the five counts إن أنتم إخفاء إلا في ضلال إضغام في ضلال مبين the first ayah وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون uh, which is uh, the translation of the ayah and when it said to them beware of that which is before you and that which is behind you in order that you may receive mercy this ayah when we look at it it shows um, it's addressing those who do not benefit from the ayat of Allah as mentioned before, وَآيَةٌ وَآيَةٌ لَهُمْ The verses that talks about the signs, from the signs of Allah to them, from the signs of Allah to them, to the people. So those who do not benefit from the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, physical ayat from Allah, the non-physical ayat. So these types of people, if you say to them, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ If it was said to them, اتقوا مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَمَا خَلْفَكُمْ اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم uh, It's the mushrikeen, the deviant ones If they are said اتقوا 
shield what's between your hands and what's behind you right so mujahid rahimahullah he said this is refers to the sins you know and um, whether it's refers to uh, basically the sins or refers to what happened to the nations before ma bayna aydikum wa ma khalfakum meaning the refers to the hereafter behind you uh, and others said is the is the sins and what comes uh, you know ahead from the sins the past and the future with regards to the sins uh, also it means ma bayna aydikum what's between or in front of your hands or between your hands which means what passed from your time living on the face of earth wa ma khalfakum and what's left uh, for you to live on the face of earth ma bayna aydikum also so this is refers to the entire dunya ma bayna aydikum what's uh, between your hands that means this present life wa ma khalfakum what's behind you refers to the hereafter right so ma bay and also some said it's the opposite ma bayna aydikum what's coming ahead of you which is the hereafter wa ma khalfakum is what you did in this life from actions do not be deceived be warned of it so when the when the disbelievers are reminded of this and this if it's said to them they turn away illa kanu as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa tatih min ayati min ayati rabbim illa kanu ana mu'ridin every ayah that comes to them from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they turn away from it so it was uh, imam sa'di rahimahullah he said when you speak to them and we are commanded to not to imitate the ways of the disbelievers the disbelievers when they are reminded they make mockery of this so uh, to uh, to uh, to oppose that is when a person is reminded he should be affected by it and not to make mockery of it and that's why when 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 you are among muslims you should be extremely at ease to advise them and they would love it so much they won't be like look at you first why you're te- talking to me like this why you're blaming me of this of course we have to choose the proper way and the the best way to advise one another but uh, the believers uh, they love that they love that religiously because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that very clearly in the quran wa idha qila lahum ittaqu so if someone tells us ittaqillah fear allah be dutiful to allah we should humble ourselves to this regardless of whether a person intentions are and um, uh, one of the you know i personally benefited that so much from one of the mashayikh when he, when we were sitting to talking about a dispute that happened uh, among people he said something very beautiful uh, that has to have a a present in one's heart not i mean you might hear it and say yeah we know that but it's uh, it has to have an effect in our hearts which is you know people blaming each other on both, on both sides and really the more you see these types of things you would realize that each person needs to be blamed and needs to be excused so both needs to be present you know we cannot just be excused you have to excuse one another and you have there's nothing wrong with blaming uh, and at the same time you if if you look at a person that did something wrong right uh, it's to uh, blame is one thing and, and and of course in the proper uh, way and also uh, seeking excuses from others to uh, so that life goes on and this is this is the combination of both brings all kinds of goodness so the disbelievers if they are told to fear allah to be dutiful to allah اذا قيل واذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين ايديكم and it shield yourself from what's ما بين ايديكم what's in front of you what's behind you with all the, these different meanings لعلكم ترحمون so that you would uh, receive the mercy uh, from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you would attain the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if that is said to them what happened they uh, turn away from it and they don't benefit from uh, the command to fear allah to be dutiful to allah so uh, then the, the next ayah says wa ma ta'tihim min ayatin min ayati rabbihim illa kanu anha mu'ridin that there is no ayah never ayah came to them from allah uh, unless they turn away from it right? they turn away from the ayat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so and this is what is only mentioned here the ayah from the Lord to be upon the Tawheed and to believe the messengers السلام, they would turn away from it. They won't reflect upon it. And that's most of the human beings in our lifetime at all times. They turn away from even reflecting upon this. And uh, the attributing 
the ayat to the Lord is to, to show that how perfect it is. وَمَا تَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ Every time. Aya sign. مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ Why the, it's mentioned آيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ That means it's perfect and complete and clear ayat because it's not a sign or an evidence from a human being that full of all kinds of weaknesses. No, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the Alameen. Uh, for them to benefit, illa kanu, unless they are mu'radin, turning away from it, not listening to it, turning away from it. And then the third ayah, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ And it was said, if it was said to them, أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ uh, Spend from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bestowed upon you. And when it's said to them, spend of that with which Allah has provided you, those who disbelieve say to those who believe, shall we feed those whom, if Allah willed, he himself would have fed, you are only in a plain error. And that's uh, the ignorance of what people have darknesses in the hearts, that's what they would uh, say these types of things. So, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ And when it's said to them, uh, even though they were uh, the people of Quraysh, they were very generous. And uh, they were extremely generous. right? But uh, when they hear the ayat encouraging them to spend, uh, they uh, would uh, withhold uh, out of arrogance, out of stubbornness. And even if they're generous, they're not generous for the sake of Allah. So, if it was said to them, spend from what Allah provided for you, from what Allah provided for you. It's the provisions from Allah. And spending here, spending for the poor, for those who are in need. Uh, what happened? قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا The disbelievers, when the Quran verses are revealed to spend for the sake of Allah, uh, to take care of the poor, and so on. The, the disbelievers, they say that as a way of mockery. قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Whether it's the, uh, the believers from the, from the poor ones, Right. Would we provide food? Would we feed those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He will, He would feed? You know, like those who you are you're commanding us to spend our wealth on them. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, He will enrich them and provide for them. He's the provider. In Antum illa fi mubin, that you are indeed in clear astray of what you're commanding us uh, for doing so. Whether it's in Antum fi mubin, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the kuffar that you are in clear astray or whether it's continuing what the kuffar said as a statement to the believers that you are in clear astray when you call us when you call us when you invite us to spend for the sake of Allah on those who are poor uh, and this is how they oppose the haq uh, they oppose the haq with the evidence of al mashia or the will of Allah with using the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, in a wrong way uh, and it shows how ignorant they are because again no one would use the qadr of Allah for what is benefiting for them so if that's what they said is true and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they believe that Allah is the provider and he's the one that feeds and brings the food and so on to others why don't they do that to themselves so why do they seek means of provisions so spend from what Allah provided for you so they would say, man law yasha Allah wa Would we feed if those who Allah, if He wills, He would feed them? Okay, if Allah wills, He would feed you too. So why are you putting effort and taking means? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this life with means. And these means, uh, whether it's uh, a person take physically means to seek provisions, or the rich help the poor and things like this, all of that is part of the means. And either a person, people are in trials and tests in this life, Either they get rewarded or they get punished as a result of withholding what they've commanded to give. So, uh, and this is just a way of, of, uh, of being uh, foolish and it shows how ignorant they are. Right? And uh, indeed, they are in clear astray as a result of what they say. And that's true for anyone that would use the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an evidence for them not fulfilling the commands of Allah. Uh, because the, uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the people to do something, that means they are to do it. 
and to leave the qadr of Allah, this is the secret of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to imitate the ways of the disbelievers. Imam Sa'di rahimahullah, he said, uh, it shows that how they, they're ignorant uh, or how they turn away from the truth because the Mashi'ah, the will of Allah is not a hujjah, is not an evidence for a sinner whatsoever. Right, so this as a, as a rule, a sinner, uh, it is not to be taken as an evidence, the will of Allah for a sin, as a sin, not as a qadr of Allah. And do people, do human beings, they function uh, like that in this life? No way. So if someone steals your money and he says to you that uh, this is the will of Allah, of course it's the will of Allah because it already happened. But would you take that word from him in a way that leave me alone, that's the will of Allah, I'm just fulfilling the will of Allah. No, because you will uh, call the police on him and he will be in trouble and that's by the will of Allah. All by the will of Allah. And as Umar radiallahu he said, نَفِرُّ مِنْ قَدَرِ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ قَدَرِ اللَّهِ We flee from the qadr of Allah to the qadr of Allah. Right? So it's never an evidence uh, to a, a, a sinful person and people do not take that so they if they say that with regards to the qadr of Allah it shows how ignorant they are and how it's just following the desires is not following reason whatsoever so everything is by the will of Allah and also by the will of Allah that they will be punished as a result of their disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they continue and choose to be so and it's all by the justice of Allah nobody will be forced to do anything by the will of Allah uh, when we look at the ayat, وَإِذَا قِيلَ And the significance of saying qila, it was said to them. Said to them by the believers from the revelation from Allah. So, and who are they? They are the disbelievers, the sinners, those who follow the same path. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ To them. Again, to show the, the importance of that. اتَّقُوا Fear, shield yourself from وَوْقَفْ يَا مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ And as you said, the differences of opinions of what's مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ what's before you uh, or before your hands. Uh, this can mean many things and all, are, all that is correct. What's, whether it refers to what's going, coming ahead of you or what's present now. وَمَا uh, خَلْفَكُمْ And what's behind you from خَلَمْ fa. And the Arabs would use مَا خَلْفَكُمْ whether it's something past or whether it's something that is not present yet. Uh, so all of that can be uh, also give the meaning. Um, uh, so that you may uh, that's the reason turhamun to receive mercy from Rahim. Uh, and there's no comes to them from Alif Ta. Yeah, that means it comes to them without too much effort from their side. Min ayatin, min ayatin from any sign, any sign, and min ayah that means it's something that does not leave any exceptions whatsoever. Uh, as uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the people of the book when they said أن تقول ما جاءنا من بشير ولا نذير so that you, lest you say no Bashir and no no uh, glad tidings and, and no warners that came to us Min makes it there's no exception any ayah the smallest the biggest everything من آيات من آيات from the ayat of uh, the Lord من آيات ربهم from رأباء إلا كانوا unless they are عنها from it معرضين turn away from عين را ضاد and العرض is the side of things and when a person gives his sight and it's عرض versus a طول طول is the length and the عرض is the width so عنها معرضين or معرضين when a person gives his sight turns away it can refer to what's presented the man has been presented. So it's it has the same root meaning to it. Uh, and it was if it was said to them, لهم, also to them, أنفقوا, from noon قاف, spent. Uh is to add things out of from you. And nafaq is uh, the, the the tunnel. So it's basically giving away. And fiqhu mimma from what razaqakum provided for you from ra zin qaf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala ladhina kafar so the disbelievers those who disbelieve those who cover the truth those who deny the truth lil ladhina amanu to the believers anutimu asking them 
أنطعم فم طاء عين ميم would we feed فم الإطعام فإذا طعمتم فانتشروا if you if you eat الطعام is food أنطعم من لو the one that if الله سبحانه وتعالى يشاء will ااا من لو يشاء الله أطعمه that if الله سبحانه وتعالى will he would feed him same verb is used in أنتم indeed you are uh, إلا except in clear في ضلال الضلال from ضاد لام لام deviation uh, مبين that is very clear and whoever doesn't see it clear he is blind from seeing what is right and what is wrong so as you as we see the the benefits here from uh, from these verses and how it's connected to the verses before with the ayat of Allah that the ayat the signs of Allah as it's mentioned in the Quran has a reason and that is to bring the taqwa of Allah so uh, as the previous verses that talks about the different ayat of Allah, uh, the earth, when it's dead, Allah give, us, give its life, uh, the grains where people eat, the gardens, the palm trees, the grapevines, the springs of water, the fruits for people to be grateful, uh, the fact that Allah created things in pair, the night and the day, the sun and the moon, all of these signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ships and so on, why is it mentioned in the Quran? To reflect upon these signs so that the person would have the fear of Allah, to be dutiful to Allah, uh, to, uh, and to shield oneself from the punishment of Allah in this life and in the hereafter. And one of the things that to shield ourselves from the punishment in this life, to shield ourselves from being deviated, from being blocked away from guidance. And that's something that we should fear. You know, when we uh, allow me to say this for a second, inshallah. Is that when we, uh, when we think of this time of fitan that we live in, and we're always complaining that many people are turning away, youth are turning away from the masajid, from the remembrance of Allah, and what can we do, right? And when there are activities in the masajid, when people are reminded of Allah subhanahu wa taala, more khair comes. But the the dis- the distractions are so many, of course. But unless a person has that uh, eagerness within oneself to have the fear of Allah and to try to save oneself. You know, in some parts of the world, people are not even able to assemble or to get together to be reminded or to learn matters of knowledge. What should a person do in that case? And it's you see that many people, when, when means of guidance are not present or widespread, what happens? Those who were religious and righteous and good, they start to change. They start to follow the, their desires in this dunya. It happens one day after the other. And then they lose and they uh, become weak in their iman. But is there an excuse for them? Of course not. Why? Because an ayah like this should be a reminder for us to shield oneself, to shield oneself from what's in this life and what's in the hereafter. We have to take the means so that we are not uh, punished as a result of uh, the, the, the deviation and things like this. So to reflect upon the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we receive the mercy of Allah. Uh, and uh, also the, the disbelievers, they don't benefit from the ayat of Allah. They turn away from it. So we need to be warned against that, not to imitate them. And uh, the command to spend for the sake of Allah, we should spend in the proper belief in the qadr of Allah. And the clear deviation is when person turn away from the commands of Allah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his benefit, inshallah. We barak Allah fikum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. And again, as a reminder, try your best to memorize the ayat. It's easy, inshallah, with repetition. And that's one of the most benefiting things to the heart. If you get to know meanings of verses, and then you start to repeat them, to memorize them, and every time you repeat them, you reflect upon the meaning of it, as if you are charging your heart, as if you are filling your heart with with light after light, and it has an everlasting effect. And that's one of the greatest benefits of memorizing, especially for those who understand the meanings of it. When you always talk about memorizing the Quran for those who are young, it's because they're, they have less responsibilities. It's easier for them to memorize, uh, but and for them to later on to reflect upon the meanings of it. But for those who have the ability to understand, the Quran addresses the adults first. So the Quran was revealed to those who were adults at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and they would memorize it. So it's it's a, 
it's it's strange that we only uh, make the memorization for those who are young. When we have the ability to understand the message of the Quran, we are the ones that are addressed to memorize the Quran. So uh, putting the effort again, uh, this is inshallah ta'ala a rewardable act and it, it works inshallah when it's in a gradual way as we go through inshallah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa rahmatullah.